Hey, good morning. Yes, <laughs> different cup, huh? My uh, coffee thermos is actually on one of my tractors. We uh, had, we worked yesterday all day just trying to get it finished up. So I had to bring out old Bessie again. But yes, today is Monday. The September 18th. And I hope you guys had a great weekend, got all refreshed, ready to come back to work. And are starting to, the thing is, is it's getting close to where it goes the other direction for us in the Northeast. So if you're looking at vacations and doing things, now is the time to do it. You know, a lot of people do it during the summer when the kids and stuff and that's you have to when you have families but i like this time of year it's not too hot it's not too cold the water's great for swimming you know it's it's a great time of year and we're we're gearing up here because i'm a family of avid hunters so we we're gearing up for that my son spent saturday Sighting in all the rifles for everybody. Uh, what we do is we have him sight him in, and then we just go and fine tune what we what we wanted to do. And then I've got I swap my old seventy one Volkswagen. Uh, it was a kit car, and actually it was a the replica of an MG. And I have had it for like seven eight years. And it was great, you know, drive around town with it for the first couple of years. But the last three or four, I've just been sitting in my garage or my son's garage. So I had a chance to swap it for uh, a four-wheeler. And that, it's a Honda Foreman. And it's got power steering. It's got electric shift. I mean, it's a beautiful bike, you know. I swapped that even up for the car. And so my son this weekend also ended up putting a, uh, it's a enclosed case for putting your rifle in. So when you're going out to sit or when you're when going out to where you want to hunt, you can put it into there and safely store it and move it. And it's out of the weather. I mean, I still have my Polaris Ranger. We use that for everything. I mean, we talk small engine here. But what we don't talk is I have one of the best test grounds for anything. And I've tried them all. You know, everything. I had a Yamaha Banshee. I had the uh, Massimo. Coleman and they just didn't hold up I mean Claude there that works for me he's got a Yamaha it's a Wolverine and that's nice side by side see there's two different types of side by sides that you guys may encounter and work on and one is a utility one and one is the, let's go for a ride this weekend. And that's what we have up here. The bulk of the people that have side-by-sides up here use it like a glorified golf cart. You know, they don't get them dirty. They might trail ride a little bit, but they're home polishing it, putting it away. And then you have me that... I use it as a utility vehicle, and I tell you, I beat the crap out of that thing. It's the Polaris Ranger, it's a 900. And it's EFI, it's a 2014. But you can ask Claude, or you can ask anybody that knows me, that poor side-by-side is is beaten and when i say beaten it's used we use it as the farm vehicle 
whether it's me feeding grain or it's fixing fence or it's hauling equipment like round bale string and to just checking on animals you know it's and when we leave the equipment like when we go from one farm to the next farm to the next farm a lot of times we don't bring the equipment home so what we do is i'll run down with my truck with a trailer on with the, the ranger on it and i'll drop it off and then come back and then when we take the equipment over we hop on the ranger and ride back to the farm and then when I go to do any work down there, I just take and I throw, if I need twine, we carry grease, grease guns in there, we carry oil, hydraulic, we carry water. We, I mean, that thing is is a mule. And if you want something that is going to last you a lifetime, you need to look at the Polaris Rangers. I mean... I told you guys, stay away from the Massimo, stay away from the Coleman's. I have I was a warranty shop for them. You know, put your little cross like that because, you know, one of you guys had mentioned that you, you could see Massimo but not Coleman. Coleman's a bigger company. Yeah, but Coleman did the same thing. Is Coleman wasn't making that side-by-side. -side. Coleman doesn't make side-by-sides. Coleman saw the the niche market of people buying these and using them as glorified golf carts and they got into the side by sides the um, mini bikes and the go-karts the only problem was the quality wasn't there and coleman has always been known for quality and i really think that this damaged them more than what they realize, you know, that when Massimo first come onto the market, I know some people call them Missimo, I call them Massimos. When they first came onto the market, you know, everybody was jumping on them because, wow, I mean, if you went out and you bought a brand new Polaris Ranger, and let's say it's the 500 or 600 four-wheel drive, you're probably looking at twelve, fifteen thousand. Okay. Now, at the time, Tractor Supply was selling them, so that's why we got into the warranties. I had we we were working hand in hand with Tractor Supply, trying to keep up doing the warranty work for whatever models they were carrying. Again, I approached the regional uh, boss and stuff and had worked out a deal with them that we would cover their service work. And in turn, by doing that, if it wasn't warranty, we built a charge supply. If it was warranty, then we had, we were a warranty shop. We were classified as a warranty shop. But they were the first. And I mean... It was just one after the other after another that, and they were serious problems, engine problems, transmission problems. And I'm thinking, well, maybe they beat the crap out of it. But the friggin' thing was immaculate as far as the plastic and everything else. I'm, something's not right. And the... It was hard to get parts for it as well, but at that, let's take us to Coleman. Coleman decided, well, they saw what Trek Supply was doing with the Massimos. They wanted in to their big customer list. So they went and looked at the different models that Hassan was pumping out of China. And just so you understand this, if you and I bought enough models, let's say, I think it's enough fill a container, eight or ten. We can pick the model. We can pick what color it's going to be, and we can put our own name on it. Instead of it saying Massimo Coleman 
we could have it say Edie or Eric's machine. You see what I'm saying? So Coleman never physically had their hands on it. They just bought what their buyer, the purchaser, thought looked like the beefier machine for the side-by-side -side and went with it. And it, and it stood higher stance, a little more aggressive than what Massimo was. The tractor supply was selling. And they fetched a little higher money. I think theirs was right around eight at the time. I look at longevity when, when I'm buying a vehicle, when I'm buying anything. You know, my father-in-law always told me that in order to pay for a vehicle, you need to own it for 10 years. Even though you paid it off in five or four or three, the vehicle you need to keep for 10 years. I don't keep them for 10 years. I swap them out, you know, when they start getting up around 90 to 100,000, just under 100,000, I get rid of them and go get something else. But the quality just wasn't there for them. So it hurt their brand. And when you're out and you're looking at buying stuff that you want to last, Yamaha, Polaris, Honda, Bombardier. They, Bombardier, well, we call it Bombardier, but I know it's pronounced a little bit different. Each one, they stand behind it. And you can see the quality in it. Yes, you're going to pay more money up front. Because the quality is more than double of what it is when you're buying a Coleman or a Massimo. But even we saw, you know, they're kind of late to the game, but, you know, each manufacturer, like Cup Cadet, they come out with their other one. And again, it wasn't their machine, it was Hassan producing them. You know, it's it's funny how if one does it, they all try to do it. See, the best company I thought that ever did this and, and did it right was John Deere. And the model they put out, it was a Sabre. And actually, the Sabre was produced by MTD. It was not made by John Deere. But it was their answer to the low end of the income for people that they could afford a John Deere. And they sold a lot of them, a lot of them. And people were t would bring it to us and tell us how, you know, they had a John Deere. No, you don't. You have a Sabre that's produced by MTD and to this day, there's still a lot of those sabers around. You know, they held up good. Like with John Deere also, you know, when it comes to, like their snowblowers, they end up having, I think it was Aaron's produced their snowblowers, but they just put green paint on it and said it was John Deere. That's smart because John Deere was looking at quality machines and who was doing the best job out there. And then they would partner with them. And we see that right up into the farming equipment, you know, for disc mowers and stuff that they have John Deere written on them, but actually Kuhn is the one that produces them. Whereas a lot of these companies like Coleman, Cub Cadet, I mean, each one of them, each one of the manufacturers bought into this because they thought that this is what the customer wanted. They wanted something that was affordable, but not the quality. And they could still make a dollar at it. But again, 
I think what they end up doing is going to hurt their brand or has hurt their brand. And that goes for a lot of stuff that's coming in overseas that the quality isn't there. But we're, <laughs> the generation that's taking our place is the throwaway generation. That is, they don't care about the old antiques or stuff that's been passed down from generation to generation. They just want something that works. And when it doesn't work, they throw it away and go get another one that works. That's the generational shift that I've seen, you know. Growing up, you know, stuff lasted. But for anybody out there that's listening and watching my videos, if you have a product that you'd like to have tested and you're okay with getting an honest review, Send it. I'll try it. And I'll tell you exactly what I think of it. The pros, cons, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'll make a video on it. So on that note, we're going to wrap this thing up. I know it's a short video today, but we got tons of stuff to get done today. People have been messaging me over the weekend. I've got one that the deck belt blew. And they want the blaze checked while it's here and everything else. And then I had another John Deere that the drive belt got shredded. So we got to pick that up. I got to pick up 15 round bales that I have to wrap for the cows. And we need to get all of our equipment home. Because we're all done with the haying season. And then I thought I'd do a quick update on for you guys that have shown interest and stuff on my wife that she's still in the hospital. They're trying different medications to see if they can kind of help her out. Uh, she's bipolar schizophrenic, so she hears voices and sees things that aren't there. And it's hard for them and it's hard for us. But we just muddled through it. And I know most families have got someone that they know or is a family member that has mental health problems. You know, my heart goes out to you. But I remain hopeful. And this should be home soon enough so that my life can go back to normal or somewhat normal. So you guys have a great Monday and shoot me some comments on what you'd like to see videos on. Something you'd like to know more about. I thought that a couple upcoming videos I thought about talking about, you know, when you're in business, when is it a good time to lease versus buying? And all the different ways that you can collect money from customers, whether it's having a system set up online where they can pay online through PayPal. <clears throat> the different the different companies out there that are set up so you can collect credit cards. And also how to deal with deadbeat customers that never paid for their units. <laughs>